is, if the devil can come at that moment and seize upon you and begin to insert thoughts into your mind and begin to make you doubt the word of God and begin to make you feel like there's nothing worth living for, then you might find yourself just like David because of the voice of the enemy. Your heart is sore pained. Fearfulness and death has overwhelmed you. You, you. you feel the power of the enemy coming against you. It's overwhelmed you. And understand it because the devil has this ability unless you get control of it. Are you here? Right there in the truck by the authority of the living word of God, I took authority over the lies of the devil. But if you don't get control of it, that devil will bring you to the place where David was just wishing that you could escape the haunting torment that has been aching in your soul that nobody knows about. It's one of the things about suicide. It's almost taboo in the church. You can come up and share with somebody that you've been tempted to look at pornography, but you're not really going to tell anybody that you've been tempted to take your life. First thing they'll do is they'll march you down to Cox North and put you in there. Come on, somebody. They'll think I'm crazy. They'll never understand I'm not going to tell them that I've thought about it. I'm not going to tell them that I have felt like taking my own life. There's no way. That's why in the church, this is what you would call a silent suffering. Nobody wants to share their problem. Nobody wants to answer an altar call like this. Therefore, the devil makes you suffer in silence, and you can never get any help because you're afraid to expose the way you feel. But David was there. David, a man after God's own heart. David, the mighty conqueror that brought down Goliath. David, the king of Israel. David found himself in a place so anguished in his heart, so aching, so, so hurting, that he just wanted to escape it all. When you get to that place, the devil will seize upon you. And suddenly he'll begin to manipulate and he'll begin to lie and begin to accuse. David in his torment, desperate, not knowing where to turn. And I want to stop here and make this, make this very clear. Sometimes in the church, we've got the wrong idea about those who may be tempted to take their life. Well, that, that, that's only the, only the sinners feel that way. Only the, only, the, only, only the lost are ever tempted to think that way. Only the, the drug addict or the alcoholic only, only the young people are tempted to take their own life. But, but I stop and tell you that, that I believe without a shadow of a doubt that there are young and there are old. There are young teenagers and there are elderly men and women that are lost and those that are love God and those that have been raised up in church and those who were addicted that the enemy has come to you and he has lied to you and he has got you to a place to where all you want to do is escape the pain. And the devil comes along and says, here is your way out. Come on, somebody, and hear this. The devil begins to show you the reason why you should. He begins to tempt you and torment you. Uh, he begins to, to lie to you and accuse you. And there's, there's four lies that I want to cover real quick. Number one, the devil, the first number lie, the first lie that he'll tell you is that there is no hope. Come on. He'll get you down into a position to where you can't see any hope. Is anybody with me this morning? Say amen. 
He'll get you so far down and he will convince you that there's no hope. There's no reason to go to the altar. There's no reason to pick up that Bible. There's no reason to go to church. There's no reason to ask anybody to pray for you because there is no hope for your situation. You're just going to be heartbroken for the rest of your life. You're going to be sick. You're going to be in pain. Your situation's going to, you made too many mistakes. There's no hope for you. And that devil will be coming. He will begin to whisper that lie into your ear. And the moment that you begin to buy that lie, suddenly he's not whispering anymore. But now he is shouting into your heart. There's no hope. There's no way out. There's no answer. There's no, there's no light shining. But can I stop and tell you this morning, that is a lie of the devil. The Bible said that he is a liar from the beginning, and he is a liar right now. And if he's telling you that there's no hope, let me stop and remind you that there is hope in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you're going through. There is hope in God for your situation. Come on. If you're sick in body, yes, there's still hope for you. If you're living with chronic pain, yes, there's still hope for you. If you've made a mess of your life, if you've messed up your marriage, if your children are out there running from God, yes, there's still hope as long as there is breath in your body, as long as God is waking you up in the morning, there is hope in Jesus Christ, and he is the answer. Come on, somebody. Number two, the devil will tell you that your life is worthless. So first of all, there's no hope. Now my life's not worthless. My life is worthless. What are you even living for? Why did God even create you? Did God make an accident? Well, what, what, what good is your life? What good are you to anybody? Come on, somebody. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. What good is your life? And suddenly he will begin to convince you that your life is worthless, that there's nothing, there's nothing in store for you, that there's no future, that you're not good for anything, you're not good for anybody. But don't you, you got to remember that the devil's a liar when he opens up his mouth. Well, Brother John, how do you know when the devil's lying? When his lips begin moving. Because the devil, he'll tell you that God made a mistake. But I'm going to tell you, God don't make mistakes. God doesn't create junk. And my Bible tells me that he knew you and he knew your name while you were still in the womb of your mother. And that God has plans for you. Plans for a good expected end. Come on, somebody. Your father, your, your father may have done you wrong. Your mother may have turned her back on you. But your life is not worthless. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, hear me again. You may have been abused as a child. You may not feel like you're worth anything. You may not feel like your life is ever going to amount to anything. But God says to you this morning, your life is worth so much that I sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross to redeem you from the curse of sin and destruction. And how many of you realize both of these lies, the sinner can hear them, and so can the saved. That devil can come to even those who name the name of Christ, and if he can begin to convince you that your life is worthless, if you begin to buy into his lie, if he can convince you that there's no hope. And I'm going to tell you, I've been beside the bed of many people in the hospital rooms who have ached and they've agonized and they've been in pain. And I've heard them before and they've said, Brother John, I just don't know if God's going to be able to do anything. But then I've turned around before and I've seen God work a mighty miracle in their life. I've seen God heal that dreaded disease of cancer. You say, there is no hope. The doctors, they don't believe. But I still believe there's a God in in heaven that's able to reach down into the miry clay and lift you up and put your feet on the rock, Christ Jesus. If you believe there's still hope, shout amen. If you believe that your life means something to God, say amen. 